Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on this lesson where we are going to visually explore how to graph a function. In this case, the function f of x equals x cubed minus 6x. And for this lesson, we really want to think of a function in terms of input and output. That is, you input a value into the function and it outputs some other value. Now, you probably already know that by definition, x represents the input. But let's not think of it in terms of x. In fact, let's just get rid of the x's for now and think about inputting an orange circle. For this particular function, I would have to take that input, that orange circle, and cube it first, and then subtract six times whatever that orange circle is from that. So again, for this function, we take an input value, we cube it and then subtract six times that value from it, and that result will be our output. So remember that x just represents whatever value we are inputting into the function. And f of x just equals the output or the y value of the function. So for this function, what happens when we input zero? To find the output, we have to replace x in the original function with 0. So for every x in the function, we replace it with a 0, and then we just evaluate. So in this case, f of 0 is equal to 0 cubed, which is just 0, minus 6 times 0, which is just 0, and 0 minus 0 equals 0. So for this function, when we input 0, our output is also 0, and we have our first point okay, that we can include on our table, and that point is 0, 0. Okay, so again, you input 0, you output 0, and we know that this function is going to pass through the origin. So now what happens when we input 1 into this function? So when the x value is 1, we replace x with 1 in the equation and then solve. 1 cubed is just 1, Negative 6 times 1 is just negative 6, and 1 minus 6 equals negative 5. So now we can say when we input positive 1, our output is negative 5, and that point 1, negative 5 is another point that is on the graph of this function. We can continue this process for inputting a value of 2. So when x is 2 in the original function, when we evaluate, we get an output of negative 4. That's 2 cubed minus 6 times 2. And 2, negative 4 is another point that is on the graph of our function. And when we input 3, we can see that 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 evaluates to 9. So when we input 3, our output is 9. And the point 3, 9 is yet another point on the graph of our function. And now we can continue this process of taking an x value, inputting it, and then evaluating to get the y value, the output, for the three additional negative values. So once we find these outputs for each given input, we can graph the new points. One is at negative 1, positive 5. Another at negative 2, 4. And the final point at negative 3, negative 9. Now we have a whole bunch of points here okay, on our graph that represent our function. Now we have to be careful when we connect these points to draw a curve that correctly reflects this function. So to do that, we want to move from left to right as we connect the points. So we will start with the first point that is furthest to the left and then move to the next furthest to the left point and connect those with a curve and continue this process. Okay, again, make sure that your line is curved and not totally straight and rigid as you move from point to point. And we can continue this process to complete the graph of the function. And if you are familiar with cubic functions, this image should make sense, since we know that a cubic function has that peak and valley kind of curve shape to it. And on the last note, just remember that this process can be used for graphing any function, and that is you take input values, you put them into the function that evaluate, and the result is your output, and you use those x and y values to find the points that are on the function, which you can plot and eventually construct a graph. And that's really all there is to it. So thanks again, guys, for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>